Podcast. They fight for their families. They fight for each other. They fight for this great university. What's up, Buckeye Nation? You're tuned in to the Buckeye Cast. Buckeye Cast. What I needed you the most, you gave us your very best. These fellas were born and bred in the Buckeye State. Handle your business, man. Everything you got. Four to six, eight to B. Nine strong. Buckeye Cast. Visit us at thebuckeyecast.com and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the Buckeye Cast. Buckeye Cast. Now here's your host, Joe Warwick. A great Buckeye. What's up? We are back. You know how we do it. We are back, baby. Hello? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Welcome into the Buckeye cast. We are getting ready for this 2018 season. Got Jeff Woo-hoo. and Sean in for this one, bringing the heat, bringing the hot cakes. You got some hotcakes? Oh, we got them. As always, please remember to subscribe and uh, follow us. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, any anywhere you get your podcasts. Just search for the Buckeye Cast. We're also on Spotify now. I know all the kids love Spotify. They do have podcasts. So anyway, uh, also, if you have not checked out our YouTube videos, we have a new animated version of the podcast so every episode is animated you got to check that shit out it's it's going to get funnier and funnier i guarantee you as always uh you can call or text the show at 614-414-2274 please use it and use it wisely yes we want to hear from you that's right so we're going to run through um uh we're going to update you here on this is tuesday What's the date? The 20th? Or Monday the 20th, my bad. Uh, Monday the 20th, we're going to update you on where Herb Gate stands and uh, what what you can expect moving forward. And then we're going to run through position battles and actually talk some real-life football on the fucking field. And then we, we also have True-False, my bad. We have uh, an iTunes review we'd like to read on the air. We'll try not to be defensive about it. Can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> and we are a couple of true false questions. So, anyway, let's get into this. Um, so, Herb Gate, you know, that's on everybody's mind. Everybody wants to talk about, you know, what's coming next. We're not going to give you all the history. It would take fucking five hours, and nobody has time for that. So, where we stand right now is the investigative committee finished their investigation Sunday. And they have handed over all their reports and everything to the board of uh, trustees and President Drake. They will all be meeting on Wednesday at 9 a.m. in Columbus. The board of trustees and President Drake will all meet. And they will decide a plan of action going forward, whether it's punishment or uh, you know time served or whatever it may be for Urban Meyer. And it is possible that uh, uh, President Drake can make an announcement after the meeting or later in the day. I would imagine, I don't know, he, he could just release a statement too. I would expect a press conference, but, you know, those have gotten hairy in the past. You know, like, remember uh, Gordon Gee? He said he just hoped that Jim Trestle didn't was, fire him. Yeah. <laughs> Fateful <laughs> words. Yeah, he wasn't around long after that. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out so well for us, so. No. So, uh, yeah, I don't, just make, give us a fucking answer. Just somehow, some way, so, as soon as possible. If it's a statement, I don't give a shit if it's a press conference or not. I don't think, I don't think Buckeye Nation cares. No. Just give us the answer. A, fin- a final, you know, a final note to it. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it, it really bothers me that it's gone on this long. You know, they promised us two weeks. This is all being done internally. I've got to think that they're going to come down something on Meyer because if not, to me, the the proper way to handle it was, okay, investigate it. Once you find out that Meyer did what he was supposed to, it's immediate reinstatement. So yeah. to me, there must right. be something that we don't know that hasn't leaked or something because if not, then Ohio State really screwed up the way they handled this, I think. and. I already think it, it might be a little screwed up as it is, but it could be even worse. Oh, right! If they come, if they come out and say, um, 
we're all good here. Um, then see, move along. Yeah, that's that's not fair. <laughs> right. Yeah, then we oh, oh, then 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 we look like to- then we I say we as the a university as the university is gonna look like total fucking idiots. Yeah, so they, I, I mean, so a... they're almost they're almost saving their own face by prolonging it, but then having to come out with something. All my buddies up here will say, "Oh, see, Ohio State cares more about football. They covered it exactly. Up. There's Back it's a lose lose. Nobody yeah, wins exactly. You know, and and our program now has to live with this taint, you know, and not the mm-hmm. body part uh, on the program for you know for how long? You know, it's going to affect recruiting somewhat. In the future, it's sure. going to well, affect everybody's. Oh, view James of the- Franklin, Harbaugh, they're loving this. Oh yeah, so Franklin's fucking car salesman, anyways. He's fucking slinging this. He's, I guarantee you, he's probably texting the recruits updates daily. As he, <laughs> oh, did you hear about Jack Smith again today? And he's texting. He's probably getting updates. Yeah. So yeah. sources are saying, uh, and consider for this for what it's worth. I don't know who these sources are. But they're saying that the board of trustees will likely likely recommend a suspension. Um, I think that's fine if you want to recommend it. How about we use the last three weeks, the suspension that he's been on, as time served, and move along. I think tacking on more time is just asinine. It's just it's making the whole operation look worse. Yeah, but. But like you said, Sean, as soon as that comes down, oh, the, see, he's not going to get punished. He can he can let that dude beat his wife and keep him on the staff, right. and him, you know, they'll they'll, 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 just, they'll they'll take him, they'll give him a three week vacation. That's what you know, everybody's kind the media will say and everything. So no, you know what? I don't. If, there I'm isn't a, there's a, there's not a good way yeah. to it if, ends. If I'm Urban Meyer, I don't take the three week vacation. You know what? Buy me out that Ohio State. You know, because for me doing that, I'm admitting the wrongdoing. And if right. and if and if what Urban Meyer said is true, um, then I th- I think he has to not not fess up to crimes he didn't commit. Right. So and and I would fight it tooth and tooth and nail. Now maybe he would you know settle on it, time served. But if they say you know three weeks now, if they can get it into Meyer and Meyer and say, okay, you guys know I did everything right, but I could have been a better spokesman. For Ohio State at the Big Ten Media Days, is that is what is that worthy of suspension? That has to be. That, that I'm sure when the their decision will have to be very carefully worded as to what exactly it, was the cause. It, yeah, so, I mean they, they'll have to disclose if that. If thinks his statements were uh, suspension worthy, then then maybe he would take the suspension or whatever. But for him to take a suspension that he did not, if he's saying that he did everything correctly. I, yeah. you know, I I think Meyer's a high character guy, and it, I wouldn't I wouldn't even be mad if he says, you know what, pay me out, Ohio State. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, yeah, gonna, hey, you know, hey, you're you're a rapist. Um, well, we're gonna suspend you five games for being a rapist, but you're, you know, no, I'm not copping to that, and so. Right. Yeah. No way, and I I don't think Meyer will. We'll see. I, I, if he if he if he if it's proven that he reported. Every incident that he knew of, you know, like as he was supposed to, like you said, followed the protocol and then every example since he was been at Ohio State. If that's proven, and they'll susp- then they try to suspend him just to make it make the appearance, or whatever. Then you, I'm with you 100, percent Sean. He's gonna say, "Buy me the fuck out." Yeah, and you, you know, get, the you only know, reason get, that they would do that, that would they would tack on a suspension, is to placate the media and the uh, the national perception. You gotta hey, I, feed the monkey. Hey, I got a Michigan fan calling me right now. Should we plug him into the phone call? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All lines are full. Mr. Newland. Oh. So yeah, uh, I I agree with you, Sean. I, I don't I don't think Herb accepts any blame. Um, the only Camp. thing I could I could see, and this is minimal, is maybe some sensitivity training, like you know domestic violence sensitivity training or something to that effect that really amounts to nothing that's that's fine i'm fine with that i think herb probably would even like that uh just as the way urban is i mean i don't think herb's like man i love domestic violence you know i think he'd be happy with all right let's let's put a program in that's just going to help my kids more right Uh, yeah and there's nothing against that there's nothing there's nothing that's going to be proven that says or it's 
Um, the media, can, there's nothing the media can can say that, that's going to prove that he was aware of someone beating their wife and he didn't care. Right. <laughs> that, that, that can't be proven because that I'm, that did not happen. You'll never coach here again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why somebody needs thirty sex toys delivered to their workplace. <laughs> I don't. I you know what? I stopped following it when I heard that story and yeah. the pictures. I'm like done with yeah. this whole story. Now and I can't think what? of if Amazon Meyer Prime did, anymore without thinking it, of that. If Fire well, did covered up, then good. Then let's also let's fire him and let's move on with our lives and let these kids and this program recover. Yeah. But let's let's do something. Whatever it is, let's do it. And I, I, it's shameful to me that it's taken this long. Well, this is such a little. I mean, who do they got? Who do they got on this thing? Uh, Fucking Perry Mason. Poo, dete- I know. <laughs> Come on, man. Matt Lock. Shit out. <laughs> Move it along, Matt Lock. Yes. Uh, a bad marriage with a vindictive wife and a yeah. douchebag husband. Yeah. Wow. I Haven't mean, seen this one before. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, the guy's a creep. She's a looney tune. <laughs> yeah. He hooked up All with right. a chick from work. They just happened. To, he just happened to work for a really, really important guy in college football. In America, yeah, mind blowing. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not gonna. This, it's not good for any. It's not a good look for anyone at all. Uh, no, there's no way it can be. But I, Myers, probably. I, I can imagine how furious he is right now. He's like, you, you tell me, I can't fucking look at my team. Am I going to have this team? He's probably telling them, look, am I even going to have this team? Because you're not letting me get them ready for the season. You know, we're only we're only two weeks out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, next... how, does it, how does it affect I mean, Meyer's there's... psyche? I mean, something like this is huge. How does it affect Meyer even going forward? Does it, you know, is, is that in the back of his head? Is he, is he not focused on what he normally is? I don't uh, know, is, dude. Is, I, is, I think is, he's... Is he broken? No, no way. I did. I did. I think Irvin, he's like, there's those like he's a different breed, man. He's like as far as when it comes to focus and stuff. I think that's why they're at the level that they're at. Yeah, he's like, gonna like Saban. This guy's he. Yeah, he's no, gonna want. He wants to murder people. Point, <laughs> you does, know, if, if he does it, he's gonna be all in. I think, but you know, maybe he gets into it and he, and he really doesn't anymore. I mean, what more does Urban Meyer have to do? I mean, that well, guy. We'll say, we'll probably. I don't even know if we'd be able to notice that during the season, but you'll see how you'll see how that if that team responds, if that team, if if we're sitting there at five and two or something, and then the team is just giving up, you'll see, we'll see that. But we, I don't think. I think this I don't think galvanizes we'll the team. I think it brings them closer together, man. I think this is what. And you know, Irv is the ultimate motivator. And this this type of uh, motivation is what he will preach to him. I mean. Uh, like he did in 2012. Yeah. It's this is what he this is how he's going to be and they're all they're all his people. I mean, they all went to that school because of him. Remember the national you championship know. game when he was coaching for Florida and uh he made up bulletin board material to motivate them. Mhm. Dude's a master motivator. He's going <laughs> to use this thing to the nth degree to motivate his team and make them a pissed off angry team and he's going to be out for blood. I I I Pity the fool that plays us. I yeah, I would be shocked if there's anything other than that to start the season. I mean, when he does finally come back, but you're right. If he if they say you're going to take the first two games off, he's going to say no. Fucking pay me. I'm out. I can do what I want. He'll sit out a year, and somebody will fucking hire him next year. That would put it you up know? to almost a month and a half suspension, and that's just preposterous. I, that's I mean, but dude, just I'm just saying, if the if the school tries to, if they're only doing it to save public, uh, you know, public perception, mm-hmm. unless he unless he lied. I mean, if he lied, then then he's got give him what he, give him whatever he deserves. I don't think he would cover up a, a domestic violence. No, you know, I can't he's, imagine that somebody being that hypocritical. They no. would completely cover it up. Somebody at his level, Saban's level, you don't need to lie for a fucking assistant coach, you know, and the worst one at that on your staff, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and it seems you know his, his Zach Smith's character is going to shit now, 
but it seems like everything as far as he's been interviewed has been nothing but glowing of Urban Meyer and you know as according to him as he's probably like the star witness for Urban Meyer's case right that's of, the problem did, that's why McMurphy fuck has been releasing all this stuff discrediting uh, Zach Smith so that people don't believe him when he says he never told Urban Meyer about the DUI, the 2015 incident, or anything else. That's why all this crap keeps coming out from McMurphy and, and uh, Zach's ex-wife. They're trying to discredit what he said. Yeah. I got you. So. That's just well, a shit show. I mean, it's like a, a reporter's getting used in a, in a messy divorce and a, a reporter's caught in the middle. Yeah. He thinks he's doing something cool and she's just using him to be an outlet for her fucking war that she's raging on her husband. Right. And it's, it's, it's embarrassing. I mean, it's for embarrassing for them, is, especially. For oh my God. Yeah. But, but you don't... What's the deal with him taking pictures of his junk at the White House and there's proof? Well, like, what? I mean, this dude's like out of those were stolen, like, uh, Zach's attorney had that text exchange with McMurphy and uh, those were not shared like Zach did not give them to somebody so that's actually a felony in Ohio and uh, if you remember the big um, was it the uh, iCloud hacking what thing is, that happened a couple years ago the White House is that a felony I don't know <laughs> it's frowned upon <laughs> I mean, depends on where you're. I thought it was encouraged. If you're in the the Lincoln bedroom, yeah. I mean, I don't know. So yeah, um, if those photographs were stolen, that's a felony. Um, I'm not sure how else they could have got a hold of the photos, but anyway. I'm just uh, saying. I mean, we don't need to dig into all the details here. We got to get on with football. Yeah, 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 cool, cool. All right. Done with that. Godspeed, Urban Meyer. So hopefully, yeah, we'll hear something Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon at the latest. Uh, if they string this out to fucking Friday, I'm gonna go score stirs, man. Oh. Jesus Christ! So I'm I'm expecting something on Wednesday by end of day. So all right, let's move forward. Let's talk about I real football. We got real players playing real football. They're wearing real helmets, real pads. They have a real football. They're throwing around. Let's talk about these guys because the season still has to be played, no matter who's coaching. All right, we're going to go through every position group. We're going to talk about the starter and the reserves, anybody that might have an impact like freshmen, and uh, let's kick it off with the quarterbacks. Should be a no-brainer, right? Uh, Dwayne Haskins, the miracle in Michigan from last (laughs) year. Definitely earned his stripes. Um you got Tate Martell, Matthew Baldwin, and then we just got this recent transfer, uh, Chris Chuganov from West Virginia. I don't know a damn thing about him. Uh, just gives us a fourth guy at the quarterback position in case, you know, everything goes wrong. You tell me a dude from West Virginia is named Chuganov? He's going to be an all-star on campus. Right. So. He's like the Ukrainian nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll chug you off. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, yeah, I don't know anything about him either, but uh, he just gives us a warm Virginia, body at the position, really, which well, we needed. Yeah, and he's in yeah. West Virginia runs that. They run that. Oh, um, fucking gun, five wide, you know, all open system. So, dude can probably sling it. You know, if he was recruited to West Virginia or played yeah, there, and who knows, he he might not be on the fucking roster this time next year. You know, we got Jack Miller coming in. And uh, yeah. what's his what's his name Mathis, the former yep. Michigan Duan, State. Duan Mathis. Yep. So we got two quarterbacks coming in next year. We'll still have uh, at least Tate, Baldwin, and maybe Haskins, depending on the se- how the season goes for him. So I don't I don't think Chuganoff will be on the old roster next year. But anyway, um, so no real impact freshman on this on the quarterback position, right? I mean, the only person having an impact. Uh, it's got to be Tate, right? Mm-hmm. We still think he's going to have a, so. a package, a special, you know, five, five to ten plays a game. I'm guessing. Maybe, but I think maybe I think we don't see it right away, though. I just seeing how like the with new developments and stuff with Urban being gone, 
maybe maybe we don't see it till maybe third or fourth game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think there I think there might be something down the road. Well, the thing is, Dwayne Haskins better look over his shoulder. I mean, he he's the starter, but I don't think Tate Martell um, is that much behind him. And I think a lot of these early games are going to be blowouts. So even if they don't have packages, Tate Martell is going to get on that field. Right. And I agree. I think w- once he shows off uh, his skill set, I- I- they're going to have to put in packages or-, or find a way to get him more involved. And I mean, well, is-, is Tate Martell going to be the backup to Dwayne Haskins for two more years after this year? So the next three years is going to be as a backup? I don't no, no. think that's Tate Martell's plan. Haskins will be gone next year. 2019. He's but, a redshirt sophomore. Yeah, he has. He'll have two more years after. Wait. Yeah. Uh, th- He's got three right now. Okay. I this doubt year, he stays that long. The following two. He can no, leave after after this year. Yeah, like Weber could have last year, right? If he has a blowout year, you know, he could easily be gone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's realistic. So, yeah, uh, I agree I, with you. Tate is def- going to be gone this year. Okay. Tate could definitely uh, have some some garbage time in the first. Half yeah, we'll see. Game. We'll see if he's going to be ready for the college games. I mean, he'll he'll get in. He'll get in some. You know, maybe a quarter, a quarter and a half of some of these games. Yeah. You know, put a couple of drives together. We'll see if he can do it. You know, and not just run everywhere. Yeah, we got Penn State week five, so everybody's going to need to brush up early be sharp they might be saving some they might i'm sure we're gonna have some shit saved up for penn state yeah you know that's, that's when urban meyer's suspension is gonna end oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude eight o'clock game or they see the urban just getting out of his car up at the stadium yeah. like all blacked out car like yeah. all right so let's chug on down to the running back position starter obviously is jk dobbins um, Mike Weber going to get his fair share. You uh, better. And you got this freshman, Teague and, and Brian Sneed. These dudes look like they've been in the program, man. They look like they've been on the training table and in the weight room for a couple of years. These guys are fucking shredded. And uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I could see these guys having an early impact. What do you think? Yeah. I, I think we could see all four of them, a lot of them. Uh, especially because you know these these early games would be, you know, a little high scoring. You know, playing a lot of reserves. Teague was an early enrollee, um, and he came in in great shape. They said <laughs> uh, they were talking about they were talking about him run, coming in put together. Hard, yeah. So I think yeah I think there's going to be games where we see four or five different guys getting over ten carries. Yeah, he's just a battering ram. But Sneed, he he's no fucking joke either, man. He's, <laughs> I know it. I, I love T because he was there early, but this Snead comes in, and then everything you hear about him, I don't think these guys are going to get a ton of meaningful carries this year because yeah. you got to feed Dobbins and Webber. Oh, yeah, me, he's talking about meaningful carries or just carries. I'm saying, yeah, I think they're going to get a lot of carries. Yeah, But, but even then, I don't think they're going to get as much as they probably should or could because, again, I, I think there's going to be some loyalty to – Dobbins, more Weber, frankly, yeah. because Weber's going to need to get some later game carry yeah. kind of when Dobbins is getting pulled out of there. So, so let's, yeah. let's dice up the touches real quick, how we think the coaches should distribute them. Um, so if I would guess, looking at last year's stats, Buckeyes average about 45 rushes per game total with everybody combined. So let's divide up 45 rushes between Dobbins, Weber, and then if it's, a, if it's a blowout, right, now, now, yeah, hey, now I, I the quarterback ran a lot. Divide it by forty. I think you're, that number is going to come down to around forty. All right. The running backs are going to get more, but the quarterback's going to get less. Yeah, JT would have about five carries a game. Right. At least. This, He'd these, have about fifteen carries a game. Well, right. These stats include the JT carries. Right. So, so let's go, go forty-five. For 40. If you want to go forty, that's fine. Whatever. I think forty is correct. But so you think like twenty Dobbins, ten Weber? Uh, I th- yeah, I, I think seventeen Dobbins. You know, fifteen. Uh, and, you know, four for one of those backups and four for Haskins. Yeah, something like that. Okay. 
Uh, and you think about it, I mean, that's not that's not enough carries for any of them. Where's my fucking uh, calculator? But um, but yeah, you know, it, but if hopefully Haskins isn't throwing the ball forty times. No, I wouldn't expect that. You know, I mean, we should be more proficient on offense. I think because of our throwing ability, we're going to have more plays. I would um, say we averaged about twenty-five pass attempts per game last year on average. All right, so then, all right, so then twenty-five and forty. So we only average sixty some plays a game. No, I think that we average like eighty. No, I think we'll, I think we'll be in the eighties, especially you, if we're still playing tempo. Which I haven't heard, I haven't heard much talk about that this year. If there's more emphasis on it, or versus not as much, or I mean, because there's times when we didn't do it. There's times when we don't run tempo. I mean, uh, and I'm not talking about ball control using the clock time. But it's not like we do it. It's not like we do it all the time. But I th- I thought we did it far less than we should have. Yeah, me too. So, uh, that, me too. I'm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so I'm how, always. How, how many carries were you giving Weber? I don't know. Joe's over there with a pencil and paper. Like, <laughs> no. what'd you say about fucking? Ca- uh, who's I'm, getting carries? What? I'm, I'm giving. You count to like 17, 75. 18. I'm giving Dobbins <laughs> like 17, 18. I'm getting. I'm giving Weber 12 to 14. Okay. And then whatever's left, I think you're going to split between Haskins and uh, you know third string running back. Okay. There's going to be some you know stuff. Hey. For, there's Paris going to be some Campbell. Paris Campbell, Demario McCall. Right, they're going to have carries. Right, yeah. Just okay. sweeps all that shit. All yep. right. So getting into the H back position, uh, Paris obviously leading the way there. You got KJ, CJ Saunders, Demario, um, Jalen Gill. I don't think he's gotten his stripe off yet. But he, what do you think about him having an impact? That's a lot of there's playmakers in front of him. You know, experienced dudes that have been in the program know the offense. I, yeah, who might he might see the field? He might is he um working at kick returner? Who, Demario? No, uh, Gill. Uh, yeah, I think he was at uh, punt return, but I don't know. I think he needs to put on some weight. He might be a little slim still. He's electric, though. Yeah. I think it, it, this will be a kid that probably benefits. From that new uh, rule where you can play in a few games, give, yeah. give him a couple, give him a couple looks. Yeah. But like Jeff said, I mean, there's so many dudes in front of him. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I, mean, I can't. It's hard to say when there's five guys that we've seen make plays already and experience, and to say that what freshman's going to impact out of that. I mean, we already know. We already. We, go. He he looks good. Yeah, yeah, he does, but. I mean, he's C.J. Saunders, that dude, he makes catches when he's on the field. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, it's not like we are, don't know about him. But yeah, he's probably the lowest of all those names. K.J. led the team in receptions last year. And yeah. K.J. KJ's stupid in the open field. Like, you can't, yeah. you can't get a good hit on him. Yeah. He, tore know, up, far as, he tore up Michigan last year when Haskins came in. Mm-hmm. Those yeah, fucking drag routes across the middle. Fuck. So, yeah. I just, I, I just hope that our... I just uh, well going to the next receiver group because that's where I'm, that's where I'm gonna spend my time. That's where his head's at. You want to go to receivers? All right, we can jump down to them. Oh, uh, oh no, no, I'm sorry, man. We, I'm sorry, we we kind of got off the track there. All right. So uh, offensive line, you know, the goal is to always find the five best. It's not about position; it's more about the five best linemen. They so, work the best together. Right. So we've had some shakeups here, and it looks like the. Uh, Coaches aren't real happy with Brady Taylor. Uh, so Michael Jordan seems to be making the, the transition from guard to center, which opens up a spot for Pridgen. So this is your starting five across the, the, the O-line. You got Munford at left tackle. Somewhat of a surprise there that Prince didn't take that. Uh, then left guard, you finally got Malcolm Pridgen healthy and uh, with his, his uh, head together. And then center, Michael Jordan at 6'7", by the way. And right guard, uh, still cringe when I see his name, uh, Demetrius <laughs> Knox. <laughs> He's still I still, with us. I still see a f- freeze frame of Demetrius Knox, and everybody else is moving around him in the Clemson game. <laughs> <laughs> and then at right tackle, you got Isaiah Prince uh, still over there. 
So what do you guys think? Um, this Michael Jordan move has to be a surprise, right? Because this was not expected. Nobody. I mean, we've we've talked about Billy Price in the past, Pat Elfline making that yeah. transition from guard to center seemed to be like a natural progression. But this was never discussed about Michael Jordan. At all. Right? Yeah, there was never. And if it, if it was, they would have done it from the jump. Um, I don't know. Maybe well, maybe we'll find out. It's, maybe it's maybe as the season doing. goes on, as the season goes on, maybe we'll find out kind of more what happened. Um, you know, some of the guys would start getting some information, but it's hard to say what what if it was if there's a little bit of an injury or if it's just he's just not making the calls. Our D line could be terrorizing him. You know, that could very like I could see that happening. Like you know, Brady Taylor's just not able to handle our D line. Yeah, maybe he's just getting whooped repeatedly. I so, guess um, it's a lot to do with the calls. You know. Um, Jordan's been there for a couple years starting. Yeah, two years started, he, yeah. <laughs> right. It, it, it's Ohio State, basically, our, our last couple years, we move our best guard to center. So that's not unprecedented for us. It's kind of the way we've been doing it with Price. No, but it's, it, it's, it's just kind of late in camp to do it, though. Certainly. Like if, if, that yeah, was the, if that was the progression, why not do it from the jump? Why not do it well, back in the winter? Well, maybe you hope a guy uh, catches on and he doesn't progress as fast as you like. And you're like, right. All right, and, and maybe Jordan, this, and, and may, maybe he was, at, and Malcolm. We really like where he's at, so we want to get him on the field. And it's kind of yeah. like, hey, Michael can do the center job. Brady, you're out. Right. And Knox, Knox is not blowing the doors off anyone. I'm sure, but he's I, probably not. He's probably surviving. They're like, hey, he's still there. I think he is the weakest link. And Brandon Bowen's probably still Good recovering day. somewhat. I mean, I can't imagine he's a hundred percent from that broken leg. He broke like two bones last yeah. year so I'm and the surprised. deadline that line could be it could fluctuate yeah. a little bit i mean we might have a little bit of movement in the last couple of years we've been kind of spoiled with I having like the, the same starting five repeatedly even to our detriment at sometimes but i like the backups you have on the right side of that line right now i yeah, mean i agree those are gonna be some yeah that's what i'm saying those those players. those freshmen and redshirt freshmen they very yeah. easily could pass. They could pass Demetrius Knox by week four. I, I'm, you know, what's, I'm not. I'm not too. I like. I like the line. If if they think Jordan's a better center than Taylor, I'm all for it. Um, th- it's, he's a big fucking center, but uh, he's a big dude, yeah. six seven. Yeah. But he can move. You know, he can move and he, he can do. I'm sure he can do what our centers are asked to do. I mean, Elf Line was awesome. I worry uh, in the short yardage, though, that you give up some of that leverage mm, uh, right there low, at the point yeah. of attack. Pad level. Got to get that pad level down. But they move people, though, man. I don't know. Yeah, we got some real I, graders. They, the dudes are not short. And think about those blowouts like we were talking about with the uh, the skill guys. These uh, second-team old linemen are going to get some playing time early on, too. And watch, it, watch out for this. Watch out for... Uh, Landers or Devon Hamilton being in the backfield this year, be blocking, <laughs> Shut up. Le- 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 smash blocking like uh, Alabama. We don't, we don't use a fullback. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Wouldn't, yeah. Don't be surprised if you get one of those little bowling balls in there, smash somebody. Baby Landers, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? He's kind of dude too. He's kind of dude that might. Ca- you know, I'm not saying he's gonna catch a pass or get a handoff, but he's kind of dude to be all about going in there on offense and smashing someone. So you got to think that uh, as far as freshmen go, Pettit Frere is probably about the only ones that could crack the two deep, right? I mean, he's he still needs some weight on him. He's like two eighty or something. Uh, but, yeah, and he and he probably won't. But those, but uh, Wyatt Davis, the redshirt freshman. Um, I'm talking true freshmen that are oh, I, I like think Matthew okay. Jones, uh, Max Ray. I haven't seen those guys even mentioned. As far as cracking the two D, wasn't that Matt Jones the number one center out of high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if he'll get on that. Two, I mean, I guess it depends on what Brady Taylor's up to. But yeah, well, he, Taylor's this has got to be a senior year, right? He's done. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He's been around. He came in with. I'm trying to think of that class. He was like Billy Price's class, wasn't it? Can't remember no. Bradley Roby. 
No. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus. He's in that Herb Street class of 84. <laughs> Brady, Brady, Brady's married. He's got married, he's got married, he's married a couple kids. Lives in, lives in Clintonville. He just, right. he just comes down for practice after his shift. Works on the docks. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember what class he was yeah. in, but it's got to be his last year. So let's just call it that. Call, we'll call it. Uh, if he's not starting this year, sophomore. What? Yeah, we got we got forty eight of them. Yeah, he's a senior. Just confirmed. All right, so let's go to tight ends here. Um, Luke Farrell, already named the starter, coming out of spring camp. Um, Rashad Berry. Love him, and then Jeremy Ruckert obviously is the impact freshman that that everybody's been talking about. Jeff, I heard you got a hard on mm-hmm. for somebody there. Uh, that's not. Well, oh, that's not I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't word it that way. All right, sorry. But uh, no, I just I thought Rucker would be an Jeez. impact freshman. <laughs> I think that, I think this is. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought he'd be an impact freshman. It doesn't surprise me, dude. He's awesome. He's he can be a weapon. What do you think, Sean? Think, sound like he's I backing off that train? It doesn't sound like he's off, off that train. I think uh, I'm I'm getting more and more on that train. All right. That Rucker kid <laughs> probably is going to see some see some good playing time. I don't know if he can block, you know, G1. Yeah, I guess that remains to be seen. But yeah. that's that's kind of my question. Can Luke and Merrill block G1 guy? Exactly. Um, <laughs> I, we, we haven't seen him... Play me. I've seen more Rashad Berry play, make meaningful plays and contribute more than Farrell. Now, obviously, Farrell's more of a probably more of a, a, an athlete catching the ball. But Rucker, that's what Rucker does. Um, so I think I think we'll see all three of them. I think you know sure. they might give him those couple games and see if he's ready. But yeah, he he won't get on the field unless he know, knows how to block. But certain packages and the you know red zone shit. Put him out there, get a one-on-one matchup. You know, he's a big target. Yep. I'm saying he can be used. All right, for so, sure. So, sounds like we have we we feel pretty good about the depth and the entire position, right? Yeah, I, uh, I would I would say Ruckert has right now an offense the best chance of any freshman to make an impact. Okay. All right, receivers. As I predicted months ago, but go. Ahead. <laughs> yeah. Check the tape. All right, receivers. You got Mac, McLaurin uh, as the starters. You know that we're going to line up in three and four sets. Um, so you got Victor and Dixon there. You can interchange them. I'm not sure there's really a uh, strict um, designation of starter and, and reserves. So um, so got Jalen Harris. Uh, hasn't done much. Uh, C.J. Saunders. um I don't know if any freshmen really have an, have a chance to make an impact on Zone Six. What do you guys think? A lot of veterans. Um, what you say later? Maybe later in the year, Sean. L- later in the year, later in games. You know, maybe I can, some guys, but nothing meaningful. Those these the, we're too deep. They're all going to want their shots too, and. They'll want to be out there, you know. If they yeah. don't want to be out there, that's fine. But those guys are going to want to be in games, even when they probably shouldn't be. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, yeah. And I don't. I consider them all one group. Like there's a group of five or a group of four. You know. I don't. I. You can't say which ones are starters, which ones aren't. They're all on the field. You know, countless. To get, yeah, I see them together. I've seen Mac and Dixon on the field together at the same time. Sure. So I, the the positions I think kind of blend together too. But I, they're all gonna. I mean, they're all gonna play with Paris Campbell and all of them out there. It's a lot of experience. A lot of. Yeah. They're all athletes too, man. KJ. I mean, we just if we just if we it's, get the ball if we get the ball ridiculous. to them, they, I think they can, I think they can shine if. You know they just they're gonna be open. We just can't mm-hmm. throw the ball to them. Well, they have to catch it, which has been a challenge. I. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But they're you gonna they're gonna be just fine this year. I think yeah. these guys have been together. They've they've been together for so long. I don't know. I think they're they're all brothers and I'm yeah. I'm a Jeff. I almost yeah. see them as one. They're like it's the group. <laughs> and and you talk about a galvanized group. They lost a coach. I mean they lost yeah. their coach. 
Well, Hartline's um, bringing the juice. Have you seen his videos? That dude is out there fucking. He's laying it down. He, watch, watch that new video, man. It is I'm, awesome. I'm going to watch it as soon as we're done. Ball. Yeah. And you know, and he's gonna. He's still the interim coach, right? They haven't given him the job yet. Right. Yeah, his that contract just, that's is just, for like five months. That's just a formality. I mean, I he's gonna give him an extension. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's gonna have the job, right? I mean, they're gonna. It's gonna go to him. I would think so. Or I don't is there, know how you is, don't? Is there, uh, who else do you give it to? Honestly, I mean, yeah, I, I think Urban. Maybe Urban. Maybe it's just a formality because all this shit going on that Urban hasn't really had a chance to. Yeah, he can, be involved. Yeah, Urban, Urban, Urban can't name a coach right now yeah i know you know? he can't now but even I, it just seems like because they they had him out recruiting almost immediately right as soon sure. as zach was fired sure yeah. they sent him out there so why would you have this guy immediately talking to these recruits when the coach just got fired if he's not going to be around because you're almost you're almost guaranteeing you're going to lose the kid right. if you send a guy out there that you don't keep the only so, way he's not around is if one of these desperate universities try to come up and say all right Heartline, not only will you, we make you receivers coach, you're our new offensive coordinator, and here's yeah, the, I don't see that happening. something like that. I, yeah, you I know, don't know, stranger stuff has happened. I, I mean, think I think this is a definite upgrade, though. I mean, this this kind of like you know falling into uh, Urban well, Meyer and, as our head coach, you know. Yeah, and he's a Buck. I mean, and he's a former Buckeye star that went to the NFL. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he, he can he can sit down in the living room and say, "Yeah, I made it to the league." You know how I did it? Mm-hmm. He this could is what you be do. the Luke, Luke Pickle on offense. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good comparison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, no so, real. Maybe Chris Olav is the only uh, receiver that possibly gets a sniff in a blowout. You think? With, I mean, it's hard to say. And if, if everybody stays healthy, which is probably isn't likely, um, we got some guys with some old man knees in there. Um, any of them probably can, but you think you're already at your fifth receiver, sixth receiver? Uh, yeah, they, I'm sure there's going to be some freshmen or so and some sophomores that will catch passes, but nobody they're not going to contribute unless there's injuries. You know, there's just too many late. guys. Late in the game, Jalen Harris and Saunders are going to want their touches. You know, sure. or, yeah. I do want to see Jalen Harris this year. I, I, I know. 6'5", 215 or something like that, 220. Yeah, I, I do want to see him. I mentioned Chris Olav just by the rule of the black stripe. You know, I Yeah, always, well, we'll probably but, see a lot of them because of or, or the rule of the black stripe. I tell you about the, the, rule, the red shirt rule. Yeah. So, so punt return quickly get in on this one demario takes over for kj um going to be interesting to see how things change I, you got to expect some more dynamic big plays right what do you think sean yeah i i i certainly hope so i'm hoping this i'm hoping this little uh success for him returning gets into more touches during the game you know me, I love me some run DMC, and the more he's touching the ball, the more fun I have watching. Hit it, run. <laughs> yeah. I hope he stays healthy, man. I really want to yeah. see that dude go off because he is, he is another one of those guys. Like Even like Don Trey was, just electric. If you just give him the ball in open space, yeah. healthy, and, and let if, him do his you, work. If you have Jalen Hill back there with him, I, I think those guys are – a lot of like both of them are probably crazy yeah slippery as hell or Jalen Gill I say hell Gill I know what you meant yeah alright so let's talk D-line here uh, probably the strength of the fucking team I would say right um, yeah you got starting you got from one end to the other Bosa Landers Draymond and Chase Young sounds alright <laughs> <laughs> and uh Backing them up, you got Jay Sean, Cornell, Devon Hamilton. Uh, here is where I think some definite freshmen are going to get some play, and that's Togi I and Teron Vincent backing up Draymond, and then Jonathan Cooper at the other end behind Chase Young. Uh, sure. Not a lot to discuss. This is like a. You're going to see all eight of them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're we're going to see a lot. We're going to see a lot of all eight of them. I think. Probably a couple other guys too. I, yeah. I sure. 
We I, should. I, I think Rizzo. you'll see Antoine Jackson in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where is he? I'm surprised he's not pushing Landers more. Or at least moved ahead of Devon Hamilton, you know? I just, because as highly touted as he was when he went to Auburn, and he was the number one Juco D tackle coming out, right? Yep. When we, when we got him? Right. I mean, and a lot of teams wanted him. I'm surprised he's not, uh, you know, a little further up on the depth chart, but. We yeah, I, we might see, and there's some we we got some sophomores, some true sophomores that were, were pretty high recruits too that we haven't seen yet besides Chase Young. Um, mm-hmm. what about the 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 guy from? Oh shit, I just forgot his name. We from, had another D tackle or two that, from Tate Martell's high school. Haskell Garrett. Haskell Garrett. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very haven't highly seen much of him. Yeah. But we, there's a lot of injury stuff that we might not be fully aware of either. He's a sophomore. Malik Barrow's the other one. He's a yeah, sophomore. Malik Barrow. Also. Who were both quality recruits. Yeah. Four yeah. Stars. Yeah. None of these. They're everybody. They're all four stars, right? Yeah, Maybe Landers least. might have been a three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at least four or five. So yeah. I mean, yeah, they they should all be pushing. And you know, we say, why is one pushing harder than the other? Well. I don't know. Cream rises right to the top, right? Maybe he's just... Maybe and, some of them... I, don't, and I think you'll see that Tyreek uh, Smith get on the field at end. I and think so, late too. Late games? Yeah. Yeah, especially early on. Definitely. Um, yeah, super, just a super speed rush. Mm-hmm. Tokyo was the first player to get his black stripe off back in the spring. You got yeah, him I heard, back in I heard spring, he's yeah. a man. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think he's going to... Uh, turn some heads. All right, so this this unit is one of the more interesting ones because it's another one that seems to be in flux due to injury and poor coaching. Um, did I say that? Uh, the linebacker units, my favorite, Billy Davis. Um, so this is what we're looking at right now. I don't know how accurate this is going to be. I think Tough Borland sits out the first few games. Maybe he's back for TCU. Well, we haven't heard a we haven't heard of an injury update on him. I don't I don't even know what they're well, not. I mean, they're not re, they're the, not reporting. The fucking press hasn't been allowed at practice. Right. So that's we're looking at on Sam. We're looking at Pete Werner. Very interesting that he's kind of jumped over uh, some older guys. Um, Tough Borland in the middle, and Malik Harrison at the will. Uh, I need to see some more out of Malik Harrison. I know he's a freak athlete and all that, but um, watching some of the tape from last year, he was another one of those Jerome Baker types that just bit, or Chris Worley, just bit on the run fake nonstop. Right? I mean, remember the Oklahoma yeah. game? game? Yeah. Iowa oh, game? Yeah. Fuck. So we're looking at Warner, Borland, Harrison. Uh, like I said, I think Borland actually sits out the first couple of weeks, and maybe Baron Browning takes the, the mic. Then you got uh, Booker allegedly at uh, backing up Warner and Keandre Jones. You have to say allegedly. Yeah, not sure what's going on with Booker. There were rumors last year after the season that he was going to transfer. Um, now he changed his number, decided to stay, but I don't hear anybody talking about him. Much, you know. I don't see Hilliard on on your list. I thought he was in he, contention there with Browning. Yeah, he should be at at the mic. He, he him and Browning would probably be filling in for Borland till he's a hundred percent. This is probably a position group that we're going to see what we see in the first week is not going to see what we you know not going to be what we see week ten maybe. Yeah. I think no. they're, they're probably, nobody's separated yet. I'm sure that you know there's going to be injuries. It'll probably I, end up sorting itself I, out over the first couple of weeks of the year. I told you guys before the season started that Pete Werner was going to be a starting linebacker for Ohio State. I'm telling you, that kid isn't going to come off the field anymore. You're going to watch this kid close shit down. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. It'd be nice to see, man. Be a three down linebacker, especially. Yeah, and all the all the spread offenses will will play against. Yeah, so in my opinion, Bill Davis has to figure out a way to get Baron Browning on the field. I mean, he's a five star. You you're telling me you haven't 
worked on him enough, worked with him enough to get him on the fucking field. This guy's a freak. Yeah. Yeah. They need to, but I mean, but if he's not playing, if he doesn't play any better than Tuck Moreland does, or, you know, if there's three guys that are, you know, without doubt playing better than him, well, I don't want to put him on the field just because he was a five star recruit. If he's not, if he's not actually better than anyone, but if it's, if you think he's got the potential, put him on there. I think he kicked. I think when it's all said and done, if Tuff does come back this season, which I know they say sometime, but who knows? Mm-hmm. I think it goes Pete Werner, Tuff Borland, and then Baron Browning probably replaces Malik Harrison or Kendra Jones. Okay. How about it, uh, impact freshman? About my guy Taraja Mitchell. His dad just started following me on Twitter. Nice. Yeah. Shout out, Mr. Terry. Mitchell. Shout out, Mr. Mitchell. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I it's hard to say when the media is can't be at practice to report what how people are doing. What about Mr. Four One Nine, Dallas Gant? No, let me just answer this for you. No, none of these freshmen are going to have any impact at all. Baron okay. Browning can't hardly find the field. You know, so there's no way these guys are going to find it. It's too deep. We've got six or seven linebackers. We don't know who the best three are. But we have a lot of them. Right. You're going to see, we'll get to see these freshmen on special teams. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, they'll be fighting like hell to, you know, to get on the field. So they'll be playing special teams going crazy. Okay. So how about secondary? We got, we got a rotation of uh, Kendall Sheffield, Okuda, Damon Arnett, Sean's favorite, and uh, Sean Wade backing them up at the corners. And then uh, safeties, you got Jordan Fuller, obviously uh, cemented in at safety. Uh, Amir Reap behind him. Then it looks like uh, it's been a, a tough competition between Isaiah Pryor and, and Jocelyn Wint at the other safety spot. So sounds like Pryor has a, a little leg up over Wint, but uh, they both have been going back and forth and battling. So that could go either way. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, any any weak spots in in this secondary? Uh, this, that that field safety is what they're calling it now, I guess. But the strong safety, I, and I don't even think it's a weakness. I think Isaiah Pryor, Jason Wimp will do a fine job, and I I can't believe they're they're kind of ruling out uh, Josh Proctor, but I, he didn't come in early, did he? No. Uh, that hurts. Yeah, but. You know, where there's not a guy cemented in, uh, like the linebackers kind of, as you know, we might see these freshmen, some, they might really start to improve. It just takes them a little longer, like Proctor, who didn't have fall spring, but he's just, you know, it might take him till week six to start really going crazy. Then they, they might get to a point where, shit, we got to put this kid on the field. He's ready. Yeah, he wasn't right. ready at the start of the season, but he's ready now. Right. It, there's not, you know, you don't have, you know, the corners, the, the corners are set. Uh, you know the D line is set. You know with the linebackers, safety, those two. You know those two spots. Somebody might they might be open for somebody to come up and take it, and the young guys just aren't ready yet. We'll see. We'll see some young guys playing. I think they'll they'll they'll, they'll go through some guys, give rotation. Sure. But I think I think our best setup is going to be Sheffield and Akuda, the main starters. And Arnett, which we, we're in a ton anyway, is is the nickel guy. That to me is going to be the main secondary. I'm curious to see Sean Wade get more reps and meaningful reps. I, I hope I hope you put got some size to him. He was he was pretty pretty slender. Yeah, uh, as a freshman. Right. So uh, impact freshman. Anybody jump out at you? You got uh, Marcus Hooker. He had a. Uh, his Dewey arm sling, yeah, had a Dewey, uh, so he's suspended for the first game anyway. But um, he did have his arm wrapped in a sling at practice the other day. Not sure uh, since we don't get injury reports, we we have no idea what's going on there. Um, I tell you what, though, I we got our our, our guy uh, Seven Banks sitting there. You got uh, Tyreek Johnson just got his black stripe off today, um, and then Cam Brown. 
Uh, I think Tyreek is is the guy that that could see some some garbage time and probably some special teams. I agree. Yeah. I think that kid. I think he he will get in at garbage time after Wade and and others get theirs, but he looked he looked like a college corner in high school. So yeah, with yeah. an attitude, I think he's got a real good chance of getting out there. And to me, he'll be our next super stud wherever that he ends up landing in that secondary. In the, the way I, going back to the uh, red shirt rules being a little more lax this year, I think we're going to see a lot of the guys playing more just because we're going to be allowed to. But there's still going to be some red shirt. At least one of those freshman DBs is going to red shirt. Um, you know, one, some one of the linebackers, maybe two of the linebackers, Taraj and Mitchell, they might... We might see him on the field up until we can't see him anymore, and then they just redshirt him. So, but meaningful? I don't know. I don't see anything any playing any meaningful corner unless there's injury, of course. We got we got three studs. They say they're talking like Arnett might be a uh, a pro prospect. <laughs> yeah, but definitely. He's pre he's preseason like and, uh, second team or something. Yeah, and I kind of looked at it. And I said, huh? Didn't see it. Uh, this That's could be our, one of those breakout years. Quarters, our worst corner is a third round draft. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, though. But Denzel Ward, when Coombs kept saying two years ago, well, Denzel Ward's just as good as you know Lattimore and Lattimore. this. I'm like, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm like, ah. Uh, I know maybe he's just being a coach, but I didn't see it. But then you know Ward proved me wrong. So Arnett might come back this year and just be locked down. Shit. It would. So, I'm, I'm a big Okuda fan. I want to see him succeed. I think he's a good dude. Um, and of course, I love Sheffield. So, yeah. but we're yeah, we're gonna need three. There's gonna be three on the field most plays. When in the big games yeah. we're playing Penn State and the, you know these big games, we're gonna have three corners on the field. And I think all three of them, you know, all three of them might be pros. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. I think we, so. we a DBU was not slowing down. That's for sure. I no. do, and I do like Terry Johnson. I, I I do want to see that kid body some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a pretty good breakdown, boys. Good job. Now let's get into this iTunes review. Um, please try, <coughs> try not to be sensitive about it. So, uh, because this all this falls on all of us. Um, so this was submitted by Gone Subbin. All right. Maybe this. Maybe uh, once I read this, it'll make more sense. Um, so he gave us two stars. All right, not it's better than one. Um, the title of his review is "Don't Listen on Road Trip," PG thirteen. All right, you know the big E on our podcast that stands for explicit. Might want to keep that in mind next time. Um, anyway, so his his uh, review goes like this: uh, the topics are good and conversation decent however vocabulary seems limited all right let me stop you right there it depends on how many pops i've had if i've had per cocktail i would say my vocabulary diminishes by 25 percent so by like after four cocktails i'm just communicating with burps and farts at that point (laughs) but let me let me go on um I'm cool with the occasional drop. I assume he means like F-bomb. But I had to turn off what should have been seemingly innocent Buckeye commentary. I never heard heard of such a thing personally. But uh, anyway, he goes on. I never heard of it. (laughs) No. And he goes on. uh, Might as well have been listening to an Eminem album. P.S. That's bullshit. (laughs) P.S. And I'm a sailor. Okay, so now the gone sub and username makes more sense. So, uh, wow! Response, reaction. Gone seven. Yeah. Eat a dick. <laughs> earlier in the work, earlier in the work week, and if you follow me, I took your advice. I tried not to drop as many fuck yous and whatnot. <laughs> so, I'm open to constructive criticism. Keeping it real in here. If you're talking about early Eminem, I'm kind of okay with that. But the new shit, I'm not down with at all. <laughs> he didn't specify, so 
And you guys that are under the water for like three and four months where nobody on the planet knows where the fuck you're at are weird anyway, too. Yeah. Thanks for serving. Appreciate it. We do appreciate your cervix. And uh, thanks for the review. Jeff, you have a response? Fuck him. All right. <laughs> Short to the point. No, I get, but, no, uh, I get it. I, mean, I get it. Cool. He doesn't, you know, he had the kids in the car or the grandkids or whatever the fuck. And okay. he's like, oh, <laughs> kids, oh, go yeah. bug guys. Turn, turn on ESPN then. Yeah. Great. Go get your, get your candy corn ESPN. Up so. Thank you for being a fan and thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully yes, we, didn't, we didn't lose you there. And everybody else, please don't let that discourage you from listening. Trust me, we're much better than this guy says. All right? Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. All right. I got three true-false questions for you, cocksuckers. So let's let's clean up the program here. Yeah. Uh, question number one. So I'm going to read three different uh, statements, and I want each of you to say whether it's true, you feel it's true or false, and why, okay? Great. Here we, here we go. The Notre Dame New York Yankee uniforms are the worst of 2018. Sean? True, false. True, so far. Okay. But but some other team like Maryland could come out and do some stupid shit. So, oh, yeah. Whoa. From what, from what I've seen... Hey, let's get off Maryland. All right, they've had a bad week. Yeah, you can say that. And they're both Under Armour teams, so you know they're going to put out some dumb shit. I will also say true. They're fucking hideous. Yeah, to those that may not know what we're talking about, Google uh, Notre Dame New York Yankee uniform. The fucking uniform looks like a softball uniform. Uh, it does. It doesn't. I have to wear a jersey like that. Yeah. and the, but it, that, I, it was for a tow truck company. <laughs> no, they've been trying to get into a conference, so they're joining the, they're joining the AL East. Oh, good. Yeah, they're finally getting into a conference. Nice. I didn't know they were That's taking cool. teams. I'm sure the I'm sure the Red Sox fans really appreciate that. Go Sox! Yeah. So, and the helmets are fucking blue. They're not even gold, man. There's no gold on the goddamn helmet. It's, it, I can't picture this in my head. It's going to be the worst game I've ever seen. I hope Syracuse. Are they wearing? Are they wearing them. those? Oh, they're wearing them at Syracuse. I thought they were wearing them against Michigan. No, it's it's no. They're, they're playing a game in Yankee Stadium against Syracuse. Yeah, and it's called the Shamrock oh, Series. So they do this every year, and this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I don't even know what their pants look like. I don't want to think about it. Anyway, Google that, people. So Jeff, what'd you say? True, false? True. They're hideous. On to question number two. True, false. We should feel sorry for Nick Saban and their linebacker injury issues. I have a quote that goes along with this. One second. Let me play this for you. Does that concern you? I mean, you got another week uh, of preseason practice. Does that concern you at this point that there's more, not more progress from that second and third groups? Well, I've been concerned about this all along. I mean, so I don't even know why you would ask the question because you all don't. Think you just think we just, you know, whatever happens, we just shit another player, I, and everything's going to be perfect. All of our fans think that. You all think that. That's what you write about. <laughs> I think I do think he shits players. Five stars. I, by the way, I can I can appreciate the the quote because he's a football coach. Like if he loses a good player, he knows, hey, that's one of my studs. That's I gotta it. not now. I gotta worry that this other dude. I haven't seen I this other guy do it yet. Other stud. Yeah, yeah, but but okay. So, but true or false? Do I should I feel? Do I feel sorry for him? Yeah, we should feel or sorry. Should I? Yeah. No, I don't feel no false. false. All right. Yeah, feel sorry for the kid who got injured. It was a couple. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't feel sorry for Nick Saban and injuries are part of the game, and he's probably got more linebackers than. Not anybody outside of Ohio State. So no, I'm to me that's a replaceable position for him. He, yeah. Didn't they lose two last year or something like that? Yeah, they, they lose. They, 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 they lose two. Year. They lose two every year. He beats the fuck out of these kids. Yeah. 
You're right, Joe. It, the, the, they get battered yeah. coming out going through that program. All right. Third and final true-false question. We haven't done too many uh, season wins over-unders this year, so let's talk Michigan. Over-under nine wins in the regular season. For Mich- them? Yeah, this is the question. Ugh. Michigan Michigan goes over nine wins in the regular season. Sean? No. False. False. Yeah, good answer. I, I I think that's where they're I think that I think that's where they're gonna end up, nine and three. Mm-hmm. Be my best educated guy. I think they're gonna be a strong program, but they're playing the A P poll came out today and Michigan is playing five teams in the top twelve right now in the regular season. Yeah. So good luck with that. Good luck with that. They have okay, like the yeah. third toughest schedule in the country. Yeah. yeah, and and I think they are going to be good, but they're not going to be that good. <laughs> no, Jeff, what you say? True, I think they're ten and I think they're ten and three or ten and two. Oh, really? Wow, you believe that shit, Henry? Right. Uh, Look, I I I, 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 I don't. That defense is as nasty as it could be. They they return in nine or ten guys, and it and, was I, and, damn and good last year. I'm just saying it because one year Harbaugh is going to strike on a quarterback. I'm just saying this dude's probably going to be the real deal, and the defense is going is legit. So yeah, those fucking dickheads will be ten and one coming in to play us. Hmm. Okay. That's surprising. I don't. I don't see ten wins coming out of that team with that schedule. I. 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 I, I just something about getting a double digit wins. If the win total would have been ten, I would have said no way. <laughs> uh, call me up after week I one, know. which I guess we'll probably be doing a show, and yeah. let me see how they do against Notre Dame, who's overrated. exactly two most two most overrated programs in the country: Notre Dame well, and I, Michigan. I, sure, and exactly. I, I totally well, anticipate them. Do beaten Notre Dame in Notre Dame, but this go, that's going to be a tough ass game I, I, for them. Yeah, I think they're going to smash Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame is overrated highly. I think their coach is overrated. I think he's been. <laughs> the only yeah, thing that sucks is Michigan's win over them is going to be way overrated. They're going to mm-hmm. think it's like right. winning a national championship. Right. That's the thing is, yeah, they're going to read way too much into it and not realize that they just beat a mediocre team. That's probably going to finish eight and four. Right. And, yeah, it'll play out over over the season. But when they then it'll go back to when you played them, yeah. they were a top five team. Michigan's gonna have a great resume coming when they come and play us. Just what they need is some false confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it'll all play out horribly wrong for them, yeah. and it'll be glorious. Yeah. All right, excellent segment, excellent show. Don't yeah. forget, folks, subscribe. Find us at the Buckeye Cast all over the place. Follow us. Subscribe. Download. Listen to the show. Look at the show on YouTube. The new animated version is pretty awesome. You guys have to check it out if you haven't yet. Um, I put in a lot of time and effort on that, and it's getting better. It's going to get funnier. So I watched some of that. Did you like it? Yes. Good stuff. All right. See? Right there is a solid five star review from Sean. I'd give it four. I don't know if I'd All give right. it five. Come on. Come on. A little something for the effort. <laughs> but all right, folks. Don't forget. Find us, watch us, listen to us, and review us. Preferably higher than a two star. Nah, keep hammering us. What yeah. doesn't kill us makes us stronger. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Jeff over in Orlando. No problem, brother. Thank you to Sean up in the D. Always. All right. We'll talk to you next week. We're going to be talking uh, next show is game week. Oh, shit. Yep. So strap it in. Season's getting ready to start. Oh, I can't wait to find out who our coach is. (laughs) That'd be helpful. If there's a hang-up and some kind of weird snag on Wednesday, I'm going to lose my shit. Oh, my God. We, we can do an emergency if we need to. Yeah. We <laughs> emergency cast to, yeah. to the nation. Oh, to call into the extra point? Yeah, you can do that. We can do an extra point, or you can do... I'll, we can we do that live with callers, if you want. <laughs> yeah. I'll, clear, I'll clear my calendar. 
I'll clear the phone lines. Beep, 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 beep. I'll be clearing every fucking dish in my house, too, while, yeah. <laughs> while we're at it. Right. I'll be, uh, hey, we're taking side bets. I I don't think Urban Meyer's going to be our coach. Oh, fuck. For what? The, you talking whole season or suspension? Ever I'm again? Forever. Okay. How much you want on that? I, I, yeah, I'll take <laughs> I, I'll take twenty on that, Sean. I got a buck on that, man. Oh. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. I guess you for a dollar on that. <laughs> sure. I think he is, but I, I I used to think he was a lot more. You sure you still want to bet that dollar? <laughs> you got you got Venmo? Yeah. All right, brother. Let's get out of here. All right, let's man, get. Man, I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Later. 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 Bucks. <laughs>